Hey, my name is Justin Marks with Marks the Spot Films, and this video here is to help both uh, you, me, and the FAA. The FAA is getting ridiculous amounts of authorizations for uh, large airspace areas, and they've come up with something called a broad area airspace authorization, which basically looks like this. Um, instead of getting a little pinpoint or you know small area like one section or a couple of little pieces of sections, they're going to give you this entire area in green depending on what your uh, your airspace is and what airport you're flying next to certain airports you might not get that much certain airports certain airports you might get a ton um, but what it's going to give you is it's going to give you the, the most bang for your buck in the shortest period of time and it's gonna and it's gonna help everybody out um, speeding things up by not having to ask for 30 different authorizations for one airspace so what this airspace authorization is for somewhere in uh, in Arizona, and uh, everything in the green is uh, given to the operator at 100 feet. So instead of uh, you know 20 different authorizations, you get one authorization with all of this area in green that you can fly, and the shaded red area is the area that you cannot fly. Um, so going through uh, quickly what we're going to do, because I don't like long videos, and I'm sure you don't either, uh, you're going to go into Google Maps. Everybody knows where Google Maps is. You're going to find your area that you want to fly. So let's say I'm in Florida, so I'm going to make it easy for myself since I'm being a nice guy and making this video anyway. Um, so I'm going to pick an area. Uh, we're going to fly near Fort Lauderdale. I, I want all of Fort Lauderdale area airspace. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick a lat lawn, lat lawn, latitude longitude first. You still need a latitude longitude to basically put uh, put put yourself on the map. So f I'm just going to pick an area. This is a nice open field right here. So I'm going to pick this area. So I'm going to go right here. After you pick your area, you drop a little pin right there and you click this right here. And this is going to give you a real uh, lat latitude longitude that you can actually, that's, that's, so that needs to go into your airspace authorization. So like this specific number will not do the FAA any good. You want this number right here with the north and west. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to, before we even start our authorization, we're going to take this number, we're going to copy it. And we're going to go to to see what airspace we're in. I know what it is, but I'm going to show you how to do it. We're going to put it in here. And this uh, this is a iFlightPlanner.com, and this will enable you to take your lat latitude longitude and put it into a map where you can you'll you'll see it in a satellite view, and you can also see it in a VFR chart, so you know what airspace you're requesting. Um, so it's a pain in the butt. So we're going to paste it, and you can't just press go because it doesn't like that. So you're going to have to get rid of any weird symbol you will just want to keep your north and you have to put a slash here no spaces at all get rid of that get rid of that and leave your period that's the only thing is you want is your period and your direction letters so basically we got rid of everything so it's one simple number with a period and the the number after that with and that's north and then you put the slash and then you put the rest of it point whatever it is and you have the west so now you click on that, I'm sorry, close, and then you're going to click go, and what it's going to do is it's going to put a little LL right wherever you just put that uh, longitude latitude. It's not going to zoom in for you, you got to do a little bit of labor yourself. So right now it's zoomed into this area. The reason I do this is so now you know on this specific map where your pinpoint is, because you can't just put an address in here. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to do satellite, just so you can see it, and that, and then we're going to go make sure, you know, that's the area right there, that's that open field. We're going to confirm, make sure we had that same one here, and that is, that's the open field right there. That's off by a millimeter, but that's they were, we're, it's the same. It's the same exact latitude, longitude. That's what the FAA wants to know. So now what we're going to do is now we know we have the the same spot on this aviation map, and we're going to go to a sectional. Now the sectional is going to show us what airspace we're in. This is Fort Lauderdale International right here. This is the airport and the magenta line, as you should know from being a private pilot or a um, 107 uh, certified pilot uh, that. This magenta line is a Class C airspace. This is Class Charlie. Now we know we're in Class Charlie airspace. This is the airspace that we want. We know it's Fort Lauderdale International Airport, which is FLL right here. Um, KFLL, as all airport codes in, in uh, the US. So now we're going to go to our airspace authorization. 
you should know how to fill this out, your name, all that fun stuff. Make sure anything with an asterisk you fill out. And anything without an asterisk you should fill out anyway. The more information the FAA has, the better. Just don't overload them with useless information. Um, put your airman certificate or your private pilot or your 107. And just you know, make sure you write it here. Is it a small UAS uh, certificate or is it your private pilot or sport pilot license certificate? Um, as far as UAS, you can put it or not put it. Not 100% necessary. Um, next most important thing, you are you are applying for an airspace authorization. Airspace authorization. You are not applying for a waiver. Do not check a box here unless you uncheck this box and then check that. You're not, forget that. Don't even, I didn't even do that. You're applying for an airspace authorization. That's what you want. Forget about the rest of this right now. Um, next thing you want to put, your start date. You can put tomorrow, you're never going to get it tomorrow, but you can put that if you want. Um, as far as your start time, put sunrise so you get the most uh, bang for your buck in the daytime hours. And you know, put sunset time uh, for your sunset. And as your end date, most of these are being granted for, I think, up to three to six months. So put six months and they'll give you as much as they possibly can. Put one month and you might only get a month, but try to put the most you can you can uh, get, which is right now six months. If you want to fly at nighttime, you're going to have to put uh, your, um, your night waiver information in the description of your proposed operation. You're going to want to make sure you have that specific number and say that you have that and that's what you're also requesting. So if you do that, you want to make sure your start and end times are 24 hours, so you have basically all day and all night. Um, so next thing, you pr propose area of operations. Um, I already filled this out. You want to request to fly within the area, uh, the entire, this is the big thing right here, the entire area of the FLL, which is the Fort Lauderdale International Class Charlie airspace, at the highest available altitude consistent throughout the area, excluding the appropriate no-fly zone around the airport. Now, the no-fly zone, remember, is the red area right here. So if this was Fort Lauderdale International, you would not be able to fly here, and you would be able to fly here. Um, this is not Fort Lauderdale, Fort Lauderdale International, so it will look a lot different, but this is what it basically will look like when you get your authorization. Um, your altitude, put a hundred feet. Don't don't ask for more than a hundred feet because your your green area is going to shrink to nothing if you ask for more than that. Because most likely, as you get closer um, towards the runway, your altitude is going to just keep decreasing. And if you're asking for four hundred feet, there's not going to be anything in this area right here at 400 feet. So you're going to get very little at 400 feet. If you want 400 feet, then you should do single areas and it's not going to be close to here. So if you want 100 feet and you want a large area, make sure you uh, put 100 feet, if you're okay with 100 feet. Um, as far as your latitude, longitude, make sure you put that here. One thing a lot of people don't do, even though the little N is there, you you have to type it in. Even though the W is here, you have to type it in. If you leave it blank, it's, gonna, it's not going to go through. So make sure you put that. Um, and we, we have our lat long as you saw here. So you're, it's 260241. You don't need the decimal point. So it'll be 260241 north and then, you know, uh, 80908 uh, west. And then um, as far as radius, um, what I've been told by the FAA, just put less than one nautical mile. They're very, very intelligent people, so they understand when you're asking for the entire airspace, you're not asking for uh, less than one nautical mile. Um, and you want your nearest airport, which is KFLL, which is the Fort Lauderdale International. It's Class Charlie Airspace. And this right here is basically what you want to ask. You do not want to tell them that you're going to be wearing a jumpsuit with flashing lights. They don't need to know that. They just need to know that you're going to fly basically the way you were taught you not taught basically the way you um have learned in your 107 uh process which is basically flying with uh you know within line of sight which is the 0.25 statute miles and you have return to home systems built in and basically that if anything goes wrong it's going to return to home and the way and they just want to know you know that, that you know this and this will be in the process of getting this authorization and um if you want to read this i will do a quick little scroll here and you could slow it down if you want. I'm not going to read it to you.
Okay, and uh, last but not least, you want to make sure you are uh, you comply with all the yeses and nos here. Click I'm not a robot, unless you are. I've seen a video with a robot actually clicking it, so that's kind of interesting. And then uh, you want to submit it. That's it. And then you'll have uh, you'll save everybody a lot of time. Good luck. Thanks. If you have any questions, post it in the comments. Bye.